YouTube's call to action extensions have been out for a little bit over a year now. And when they first came out, I was a little upset. At first it was kind of limited on how you can use them and I just flat out missed the old overlays. But as the year has gone on, I've really grown to embrace these and I've loved these call to action extensions. We can do more testing now with our video ads than we could with the old overlays. So in this video, I just wanna do a refresher since it's been a year on what we can really do with these call to action extensions and the impacts they can have on your video campaigns. Before I go through the setup, let's see an example of a YouTube call to action extension. I originally clicked on a link to watch this blooper video, but instead of the blooper video starting right away, we get an in-stream ad to kick things off. You can see on the lower left-hand side of the video, I can get an image of the brand, I get a headline, and we see a blue call to action button. If I click on that button, I will be sent to that advertiser's landing page. If the viewer does not wanna watch this ad anymore and they click on the skip button, I'm now watching the bloopers video that I originally tended on watching. But if you look in the upper right hand side, we still see the brand logo, the headline, and the call to action button. Now what this particular example is missing is the companion banner. And that's that weird gray rectangle we see up above. If you wanna know how to set up the companion banner, we have a separate video which you can check out right here. So now we know what the call to action extension is. Let's learn how to set one up within the Google Ads interface. I'm already in the portion of my video campaign where I create the video ad. I'm not gonna go step by step on a campaign setup. That's gonna be completely different for every account. But the process of setting up a call to action extension is going to be the same. So when you're creating your video ad, you can either search for the video or paste the URL of a video that you already have. If this one looks familiar, it's the one I created when I did the video builder tool demo. After you have your video in place, start adding in your URL, and then right under the display URL, we see the optional call to action button. If your focus is to drive traffic to your website, then I recommend that you add a call to action extension to every single one of your video ads. Now in the beginning of the video when I showed you an example of a call to action extension, one of the parts that I mentioned was the image or the logo of the brand. We cannot control that image. That image will pull from the main channel image of where this YouTube video lives. So since I created this specific video on my personal YouTube channel, you see my picture is gonna be part of that call to action extension. Even though I'm creating this ad in the Paid Media Pros account. If I wanted a Paid Media Pros logo there instead, I'll either have to change my personal YouTube channel's image or upload a second video into our YouTube channel to be able to have the right image that we want. Next, you can enter a 10 character call to action. This is gonna be the main part of the call to action extension that really stands out and can capture a user's attention. Now, if you're thinking, wait a minute, 10 characters, that seems pretty short. You're not wrong. It can be pretty tough sometimes to think of a valuable call to action that's really gonna entice your viewers in just 10 characters. So to try to help you out, I came up with a short list of CTA examples you may want to use for your video ads. Initially, I'm starting off with some softer call to actions. We have learn more. If you want to encourage more video views, you can watch more. And then we can get a little bit more aggressive, asking users to get a quote, shop now, buy now, book now, and then other value type messages just offering to help users, let them know that you help or just visit the website. So I know there's a lot more CTAs we can probably come up with that'll fit within 10 characters, but hopefully this list will have some sort of inspiration and it'll give you new ideas to test for your video ads. But now let's head back to the Google Ads interface and we can talk about headlines. The headline is gonna be 15 characters long. Now I know when you think of headline, you think of something that really stands out, but as I type in one option here, you see it's not gonna be as visible as the call to action button itself. So if we look at the preview, the blue learn more button is our call to action. And then that smaller black text that says paid media pros is our headline. This can help you better plan what you may wanna test out for each of your options for your call to action extensions. The character limit differences will definitely weigh in a lot with that decision. But if you plan on using shorter options for both the call to action and the headline, you'll have more room to play around. Next, the next part is your companion banner and that's available for any in-stream ad that you create. You remember in the example I had at the beginning of the video, there was that weird grayed out box. That was the companion banner. And we can see by default, it's gonna automatically use the banner from your YouTube channel. So in that particular case, they didn't have one set up for the channel. You do have the option to upload your own image, but I'm just gonna leave it as is. And I'm gonna stick with the ad name and then we could save it. Now what you're seeing on the screen right now is an example of the old call to action overlays. These are now sunset. You cannot add these to your videos anymore. They were a little card that appeared on the lower left-hand part of the video. And the main caveat about the overlays is that you can only add them at the video level. They even showed up on your organic videos. So you cannot change up your call to action overlays for every single ad you created. It was stuck to the video itself. 
And while originally when I was mad that we lost the overlays because I wanted that little call to action button even on my organic views, I really embraced the call to action extensions because it allowed us to actually finally test out these messages for our video ads. Let's go back and edit the first option that we created. A generic ad name is okay, but if the goal is to drive more traffic and hopefully get conversions, I personally like to use ad names that actually reflect the headline and the call to action I'm using that's driving that traffic. So I'm going to change our current one to show you how I like to usually set up my ad name. I'm calling out the video name first, then the call to action option, and then what I'm using as the headline. So as we save this, we'll see it's now reflected within the ad name. And like I just said just a minute ago, we now have the option to test new video ads against each other. So I'm going to create a new ad, use the same video, use the same website, and when I'm adding my CTA extension, I'm going to test out two different things. So in my second ad, I might be a little bit more aggressive with my CTA and try to get people to subscribe. And then instead of my brand name as the headline, I'm choosing to describe what I'm trying to sell or what I'm trying to push. So I want to make sure those changes with my call to action extension are reflected within my ad name. The video stayed the same, so I'm going to include that within my ad name, update my CTA, and then update my headline naming convention. Scroll back down and we can save this one. And now we see I have two ads ready to test against each other and I can keep on going to have enough before I want to launch this campaign. This now gives the advertisers a variety of different ways that they can not only test out different videos, but also test out the messaging and the extensions that we're putting on those videos. Depending on how much video creative you have, you can find out what combination of creative and messaging is going to have the best impact with your desired target audience. So feel free to add a variety of different ads per video campaign ad group to find that perfect combination. The last thing I want to talk about is how an advertiser gets charged when utilizing CTA extensions within their video ads. To explain this, I want to backtrack a little bit and try to fully explain how an advertiser gets charged when using TrueView in-stream videos. Most TrueView in-stream campaigns run on a CPV or cost per view bidding. There are a few exceptions, like the bumper campaigns that can run on a CPM bidding, but for the most part, if you're setting up a video ad campaign within Google for the first time, you are going to use the CPV bidding strategy. Now how YouTube charges for in-stream, this is why it's one of my favorite advertising platforms, is that the advertiser only gets charged when a user watches at least 30 seconds of the video ad. For whatever reason, if your ad is under 30 seconds, you will get charged if the viewer watches the entire ad. But if the user interacts with any interactive element of that video ad, like shopping cards or your call to action extension, the advertiser will also get charged. It's going to be whatever comes first, whether they watch the whole video or they interacted with your card. You will not be double charged. It's only going to be whichever one comes first. So if you have a 20 second ad and the user watches the whole thing and then later on they decide to click on that call to action extension, you're only going to be charged for that initial CPV. So when you're setting up your campaign and you want to set your max CPV bid, make sure you're keeping your call to action extensions in mind. Because if you start testing out more and more extensions and you're finding ones that users actually want to click on, you may find that your video campaigns might be more expensive than you were actually predicting. But if you are driving the right user and you're finding out that user eventually is converting down the road, then paying extra for that view or that click is definitely worth it. So hopefully this video gave you the basic information you need to start going into your video campaigns and adding the optional call to action extension to all of your TrueView in-stream videos. Having a combination of great creative and an enticing call to action message is an awesome one-two punch of user engagement and relevant traffic that is eventually going to convert. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.